On December the 22nd, the sun going south reaches its lowest point in the sky, our winter solstice. At that lowest point, the sun stops moving on the sundial for three days, December 22nd, December 23rd, and December 24th, in the southern constellation known as the Southern Cross. Hence our Savior, dead for three days, died on the cross. The Southern Cross constellation, that is. This is the only time in the year, folks, that the sun actually stops its movements in our sky, according to the mystery schools. On the morning of December the 25th, the sun begins its annual journey back to us in the northern hemisphere, bringing, of course, our spring. Therefore, on December 25th, the sun is born again. And to this day, his worshippers still celebrate his birthday. It is at this point that we should look at the significance of the recurring number 12 in the Bible. First, 13 is said to be unlucky for humans. It is a heavenly number and represents the sun plus the 12 equals 13, or Christ plus the 12 disciples equals 13. It's unlucky for a different reason, folks, and I will explain that on another program, but it has to do with the persecution of the mystery school, the mystery religion. It would be well to get a Bible concordance and look to see how many times the number 12 is used in the entire Bible. Also in the Bible you will find many combinations of the number 7 in the mystery religion that represents the seven stars of the Pleiades. Here are a few examples of the use of the number 12 in the Bible. The 12 months of the year, the 12 apostles of the sun, the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 brothers of Joseph, the 12 judges of Israel, the 12 great patriarchs, the 12 Old Testament prophets, the 12 kings of Israel, the 12 princes of Israel, God's son and temple at 12, and there are many more. All these examples, and countless more, derive directly from the ancient world's fascination with the twelve signs of the zodiac. Now remember, folks, what I'm giving you is the teachings of the mystery school, and this does not necessarily reflect any of my own beliefs or my own religious beliefs. We cannot fight against these manipulators unless we know who they are and what they believe. And what you want to believe is your own business. As we noted before, folks, the year was divided into twelve equal parts, or months, and to each month was appointed a heavenly symbol or astrological sign. Three of these signs made up one season, and the world, or the heavens, was divided into four separate seasons. Each of the twelve monthly signs were called houses of the heavenly zodiac. The astronomers of Babylon divided the sky into twelve houses. They did this to account for the fact that the planets were not always exactly in the ecliptic, but appeared to wander a certain number of degrees either side of it. They therefore had to assume that each sign of the zodiac extended its influence through a fixed portion of the sky, which they thought of as a house to which a planet could return when it completed one of its journeys about the sun. The great god of the day had its house in Leo, Leo, the Lion of Judah, where he ruled at the head of his splendor. The moon ruled in Cancer at the right hand of the sun. The other planets were given two houses, one for day and one for night. And since the zodiac divided the sky into twelve equal portions, each of these houses was also equal, comprising thirty degrees, or one-twelfth of the three hundred and sixty degree circle. And the houses and signs of the zodiac were as follows. Aries was the ram, or lamp of God. Taurus, the bull, the golden calf. Gemini, the twins, which represented Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau, or Jesus and Satan, for in mystery Babylon, Jesus and Satan are brothers, and in some sects of the mystery religion, they are the same entity. Cancer, the crab. Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah. That can be found in Revelations 5, verse 5. Virgo, the virgin, spring birth of God's son, or Mary. Mary, or Marie, means pure. Thus Mary, the virgin, the mother of God, when God is reborn or born in the spring. And that is where the mother holding the child, Isis with the child, Horus, and all through the history of the world, you will find a virgin holding a child in every culture, every language, in every continent of this earth. 
Libra, the scales. Scorpio, the scorpion, the backbiting traitor, Judas. Sagittarius, the archer. Capricorn, the sea goat, or the goat of Mendes. Aquarius, man with the water pitcher. Pisces, the two fish. The age that we are leaving at this point in time is the age of Pisces. And, according to the mystery religion, we are entering into the age of Aquarius very soon in our future. And to them this has great meaning, for it means the dawn of the new age, the age of the illumined man. The number of the man is 666 in the mystery religion. Today, we have expressions when someone dies. We say things like, they passed, or they passed on, or they passed away. The ancients said, they passed over from one life to another. And so it was with the coming of spring. As God's Son is resurrected from the death of winter to his new life in spring, this is why Christians celebrate the resurrection with a sunrise service at Easter. And the Jews, who knew this ancient religion from their time in captivity in Babylon, celebrate the same with their Passover. With this knowledge, we now add the fact that the first decan of the astrological sign of Virgo is Coma, or the desired one of the nations. This was pictured by the ancient astrologers as a virgin girl holding a newborn babe. Hence our Madonna and child motif. So in the spring, our Virgo, God's son, is born of a virgin. Incidentally, the astrological symbol for Virgo is the letter M, or Marie, which means pure, hence Mary the pure virgin. And all through every culture you will find other representations by other names of the virgin mother with the child, Isis with the child, Horus, born of a magical intercourse when Isis changes into a bird and flutters over the dead, Osiris, Osiris representing the sun, Isis representing the moon. We are part of a great fraternity of man, according to them. We are creation's voice to sing praise to God as we gather in the morning. <laughs> the morning, folks, to pray. The very time of day recalls our creation and our new creation in Christ. Be aware that the rising sun is the image of Christ, our sun and source of life, and that is taken right out of a Protestant church's leaflet calling for the congregation together for the Easter sunrise service. God's Son is the chief shepherd. God's Son is called the chief cornerstone. Now, in our research into the mystery schools, we find that the word in Greek for chief cornerstone simply meant the peak of a pyramid. The corner foundation stone, or peak of the pyramid, the prefix acro, or topmost, was added by the Jews to the already existing Greek adjective goniaios, or at the corner. In that way, the translators of Isaiah rendered the Hebrew word for corner, pinya isai, 28.16, describing the stone which was a sure foundation and which probably had reference to the future Messiah. Well understood by the Christian writers was that of an important stone which was both acro, a peak, and a goniaios, a cornerstone. But there are four or more corners to a building, and a stone at a corner cannot be uniquely significant. Although you will find in Freemasonry the ceremony of laying a cornerstone for every building that is built, and you look at all the buildings in Washington, D.C., you will see a cornerstone with the Masonic symbols and Masonic date of the mystery schools of the calendar of 6,000 years. Well, we found that we don't believe that it can be significant unless the stone be at the apex of a pyramid where all corners meet and bond together, and that is the secret of the truncated pyramid missing the capstone on the reverse of the great seal of the United States. For we have found in our research that in the mystery religion, the master mason is the cornerstone or the peak of the pyramid, the illumined man who functions as the eye of Horus or the spy for the mystery schools wherever he is at. Just as the Great Pyramid near Mexico City is called the Pyramid of the Sun, so also the Great Pyramid of Egypt was actually dedicated to Horus the Sun. 
a picture of this you may see on the back of any one dollar bill above the pyramid folks is the eye the sun the eye of horus the son of god the new testament tells us three different times that god's son was taught by and learned all things from the father he was the pupil we are told at matthew chapter fourteen verse seventeen and nineteen that god's son tends to his people's needs with two fishes the two fishes being the astrological sign all astrologers know as pisces thus we have had for almost two thousand years god's son ruling in his kingdom or sign of pisces the two fishes as stated before these signs are called houses therefore pisces is the lord's house at this time truly the greatest fish story ever told according to astrology sometime after the year two thousand and ten Catch that date, folks, the year 2010. And remember what I told you about 2001. Arthur C. Clarke is obviously a member of the Mystery Schools. And Stanley Kubrick, who's responsible for making the movie, is obviously a member also. According to astrology, sometime after the year 2010, the sun will enter into his new sign or his new kingdom. As it was called by the ancients, this next coming sign or kingdom soon to be upon us will be, according to the zodiac, the house or sign of Aquarius. So when we read at Luke chapter 22 verse 10, we now understand why God's Son states that he and his followers at the last Passover are to go into the house of the man with the water pitcher. So we see that in the coming millennium, God's Son will bring us into his new kingdom, our house of Aquarius, the man with the water pitcher. Once we realize that in astrology each month is assigned one of the so-called houses of the zodiac, and in heaven are twelve houses, our twelve monthly signs, then the words we read of God's Son saying, quote, In my Father's house are many mansions, unquote, makes sense when translated correctly. The proper translation is as follows. Father's house equals heavenly abode. Mansions equal houses. So correctly read, in the original text we read, In my Father's heavenly abode are many houses. Yes, twelve to be exact, according to the mystery religion of ancient Babylon. Anyone familiar with modern-day Christianity must surely know we are said to be living in the last days. This teaching is in part based on the idea expressed in Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 of the King James Bible where God's Son says, quote, I will be with you even to the end of the world, unquote. End of the world? Yet another simple mistranslation to clarify, and there are many in the Bible with a proper understanding of the actual words used, this end of the world is translated differently in various Bibles. Some say end of time. Some say end of the days, and still others say conclusion of this system of things. So what does all this talk of the end times or last days really mean? Well, here's the simple answer, folks. According to the mystery schools, when the scriptures speak of, quote, the end of the world, unquote, the actual word used is not, I repeat, not end of the world. The actual word in Greek is aeon, which when correctly translated means age. Aeon, or A-E-O-N, remembering that in astrology each of the twelve houses are signs of the zodiac, corresponds to a two thousand year period of time called an age, we now know we are one thousand nine hundred and ninety two years into the house or age of Pisces. Now correctly understood, it can rightly be said that we today, in fact, are living in the last days. Yes, according to the mystery schools, we are in the last days of the old age of Pisces. Soon, God's Son will come again into his new kingdom, our new age, and that's where all this new age movement and new age comes from, new age of Aquarius, man with the water pitcher, Luke chapter 22, verse 10. That's right, folks, the new aeon, or the new age. This, according to the mystery schools is the perversion of Christianity. This is the theme of the Bible, God's Son and His coming kingdom age, the new age of Aquarius.